Let's Talk Motorsport, and uh, welcome to some more supercar news. It is a brand new week, which means there's brand new news, and holy moly granoli in my cannoli, what the hell happened this week? There he has been some incredible supercar news, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. But of course, before we do, if you want more in-depth supercar content, obviously be sure to hit the subscribe button. And be sure to like and check out our brand new website, ltmotorsport.com, because that's where I'm going to get all this information from. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Starting off with the biggest way to start the week is that Mark Winterbottom. Uh, it will be leaving Team 18 at the end of the season. And the person who will be replacing him is none other than Anton Di Pasquale. Now... We did make a silly season review, uh, um, a, a, season, a silly season uh, pr uh, predictions uh, a little, little while back, way before the Kyala news um, came out and the whole Grove drama happened. So Anton going to Team 18 was certainly not on our cards, that's for sure. Um, but I'm excited to see uh, this opportunity for Anton. I am very intrigued to see how he does in the Camaro compared to the Mustang. Uh, he has had a up and down year or up and down run with uh, DJR. Of course, he has he did replace Scott McLaughlin, so he definitely has some shoes to fill. But I am very excited to see what the young twenty eight year old can do next year. Um, now I might I I'm pretty sure it's a multi year deal as well, so uh, he'll be partnering up with David Reynolds. It's a bit of a shame, really, though, for Mark Winterbottom, um, who, you know, doesn't get to go on his own terms. And I was actually kind of surprised as well, because uh, he's actually been performing uh, and leading the, uh, the championship in regards to him versus David Reynolds as, in terms of teammates. So that was rather interesting. But, uh, um, yeah, it is what it is. But uh, hopefully uh, Frosty can go out on a high in terms of what's happening to Frosty next year, though, I I don't think we'll ever see him back in a full-time drive. Unfortunately, that's the reality of supercars, um, and given his age and stuff now, and how many young guns are waiting to jump into seats, I don't think it will be um, happening. However, um, maybe a co-drive uh, could potentially be on the cards uh, for any team, really. He could maybe go back to Tickford. Or he could go to Triple Eight, or who knows? That, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh, but that wasn't all of the rate driver news. At least we had more announcements. Um, with drum roll, please. <laughs> Brody Kostecki officially uh, signing with Dick Johnson Racing for 2025. Uh, now, as far as I'm aware, this could potentially just be for 2025. There's been no sign of whether it will be a multi-year deal or not. I uh, haven't found any information. But I think another fantastic opportunity uh, for Brody. Uh, he obviously already seems a lot happier with the <laughs> with the Queensland squad. Um, but I'm very excited for not only him, but also Dick Johnson Racing. We maybe could see the return of the success we once saw with Scott McLaughlin. Um, that's how good Brody is. Of course, you know, reigning champion... Uh, he did an incredible job last year with Erebus Motorsport, uh, and he's had a really unfortunate year this year. So I'm very excited to see him have a fresh new start, a different car. He's going from a Camaro to a Mustang, and that Mustang is a lot better than what it was last year. Of course, uh, DJR had a horrible year last year, um, and their luck is starting to turn around, but they haven't had the most, in like, consistent year in terms of results uh, they've had uh, a bit of a mixed bag but uh, as of late they have been pretty decent of course we had podiums at Topor and also pole position at uh, uh, I think Sydney so um, I'm excited to see that partnership grow uh, I can't wait and you're also probably wondering uh, now that leaves a seat for Erebus who will be taking that seat will it be Todd Hazelwood will it be Job Stewart will it be Jared Hughes the answer is no no, and no. In fact, it's actually going to be Cooper Murray. Now, Cooper Murray, of course, he races for Eccleston Motorsport in the Dunlop Super 2 category and does a fairly good job at it. He also appeared and will be appearing as the wildcard for Triple Eight this year. 
Uh, he had an appearance in Darwin, and he actually made it into the shootout in, on debut as well, which I believe, prob I think, is what actually impressed Barry Ryan um, to join the team. Um, he did a, he he did a fantastic job. He got caught in um, some drama though on the weekend, but uh, not really his fault though. But in terms of pace, he was quite promising, and I'm very excited to see how he does at Sandown and Bathurst with Craig Lowndes, um later this month. But uh, I'm very excited to see him go to Erebus. Um, he'll be racing obviously the number 99. Um, now he's had some incredible teammates. Uh, like the likes of Brock Feeney and uh, Kai Allen, who've all been promoted to supercars now. Obviously, Kai will be joining um, the same year as Cooper does. But I'm so excited to see Cooper finally get given a main game opportunity and to see what he can do. Of course, um, it is actually a multi-year deal as well, I forgot to mention. And of course, uh, he was fairly handy behind the wheel at a Porsche Carrera Cup. So... Very, very excited to see what he does in that Erebus next year. And speaking of the Triple Eight wildcard, they uh, revealed a new livery. Um, where it looks very nice. I love the black and yellow. Uh, and it's also technically a brand new chassis as well after that Darwin incident. Uh, it looks very nice. I'm very excited to see how they go this year, of course. Um, and they're sort of aiming for a potential podium as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see indeed. Now we head on to another young gun in the Super 2 category is that Matt Charter Motorsports has signed a Porsche young gun for the next two Super 2 rounds in the hands of Aaron Shields. Now, if you don't know who Aaron Shields is, he races in the Porsche sprint challenge at the moment he actually ended up being a runner-up last year um and he tested with matt charter motorsports uh, a little bit a little while ago um in that commodore and uh, from the sounds of it as well he might well and truly replace matt at the team in the team um for next year's dunlop series season um, now, of course, Matt Charter is taking a step back at the moment um, for the next two rounds to focus on his main game journey as he'll be uh, appearing as a wildcard with Brad Vaughan in a triple eight Camaro, which actually is the same Camaro that Brock Feeney and Jamie Wincup used to win the Sandown 500 last year. So they got an incredible kit. So I'm very excited to see how they go. But I'm very, very excited to see how Shields goes uh, competing in Super 2. Um, he'll be running number 116, which is actually his race number now in the sprint challenge. Um, and I'm very excited to see how he does. Uh, this is what Amin Charter had to say regarding him, his decision. Uh, it's awesome. He tested here a couple of weeks ago with us. He gave him a bit of a run and he impressed us. So that's all it takes is to have a little test day. And if you do a good enough job, you might get the chance. And it's just, I, I love what Matt Charter Motorsports does. Uh, is doing for the for the, the future of the sport, giving people a go who might not have the funds to to, to you know to take it to Triple Eight, for example. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I love it. And uh, in terms of Matt Charter as well, he will be returning to Super Two uh, for the Adelaide round this year. But uh, from the sounds of it, he might be taking a step back uh, and focus more on the mentoring side of things and the engineer side of things. Uh, and Aaron. Shields might end up in that car full-time next year in the Dunlop series. Now, next up is Tickford. Tickford Racing have officially completed their the Enduro lineup puzzle. Uh, of course, they were the last team, um, you know, they were the last team to announce their co-driver um, co-drivers for the Sandown Bathurst rounds. And they've chosen James Moffat um, to partner up with Cam Waters and Tyler Everingham to t team up with Thomas Randall. Now, of course, um, you know, the big part of Tickford, they've been there for a while now. Tyler, of course, raced with Declan Fraser last year. So uh, great opportunity for Tyler to be stepping up once again with Thomas Randall in that Castrol Mobile. Um, and I'm excited to see what James Moffat and Cam Waters can do. Um, Tickford have been quite good, uh, especially uh, as of recent, uh, with their pace. They've certainly been the ones to beat lately, so I'm very, very excited to see what they can do. Who knows? We might get a different Sandown winner. Maybe Triple Eight will be in danger. I guess we have to wait and see there. But of course, you know, 
with them dropping down to a two-car team um, at the beginning of the year, uh, the likes of Zach Bess and Gary Jacobson, who who co-drove, co-drove for them last year, unfortunately missing out this time around. But uh, nonetheless, I, I literally, you know, I support the decision of dropping down to two cars because lately their 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 season um, has been incredible because of it. And uh, just last bit of news before we wrap this up is the Adelaide 500 Speedway design has been revealed. So the the organisation has showed a render of the Speedway circuit that will be, I believe, from the looks of the render, it looks like it'll be placed where usually the concert area is. Yeah, the, the circuit is going to be roughly 342 metres uh, and it will be built two weeks prior to the event taking place. Uh, from the sounds of it as well, there's going to be action non-stop every night, uh, which is going to be awesome. But uh, the NAPA Sprint Car Invitational will be taking place Thursday and Friday nights, which will see an all-star um, squad such as James McFadden, Lachlan McHugh and Jock Goodyear uh, battle all out um, for a $100,000 prize. It is going to be killer it's such an incredible thing what the Adelaide 500 is doing this year. It's really, really becoming the festival of motorsport. And, and funny enough, uh, of course, that same place hosts the Motorsport Festival yearly, which is always an incredible event. This is what um, Rebecca Lawson, who is the chief executive of Velo Adelaide 500, had to say about this. Uh, we know that the addition of the Napa Speedway sprint cars of the city has delighted motorsport fans across the country, and we are extremely proud to have the best in the industry building the track and racing. It's the first time that sprint cars have been back in the city of Adelaide since Rowley Park, and the purpose-built track has been designed to provide the best racing spectacle for our fans. I can't wait, and we will certainly be there, um, both Alex Ivan and myself, uh, we'll be representing both Slipstream and LTM. So we'll be definitely trackside all weekend. It's going to be epic. And from the looks of it as well, they're going to be uh, the organization uh, has announced that they'll be capping a total of 8,000 spectators, uh, which will have plenty of viewing action, uh, viewing areas um, to watch trackside, um, the standing areas, and also VIP hospitality areas as well. So. It's looking at to be a incredible part and hope of the event, and hopefully we can see them continue in the future. Of course, the 500 has the sprint cars, the speedway, uh, yeah, obviously, um, the super trucks, the super cross, and obviously the Trans Ams, the, uh, the super utes, and um, the other categories as well. It's going to be epic. I cannot wait. But uh, that's it for news today. Um, if you did like this video, be sure to hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't and if you want to see more supercar news and uh, related content as well we also cover formula one motor gp indycar nascar any grassroots stuff as well um and also check out our, our new website ltmotorsport.com to see all the latest news across motorsport around the globe uh i basically exactly just described it with motor gp supercars formula one you name it uh, especially the grassroots stuff. So be sure to check out uh, ltmotorsport.com for all your latest motorsport news. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.